So, happy to be with you this afternoon. As you can see, the title is AR, the next media with a question mark. It only, can only come from a kind of skeptical guy coming from the old world. Um, so why put this question mark? It's because, I mean, for me, uh, real media uh, exists when users look at the content, the story, the value that we want to share, not at the technology. We see often, yeah, we have the wow effect. It's, it's really like magic. But just don't forget, if you're a magician, you make your magic, magical tour once, it's great, it's fantastic. Second time, people try to look where is the, the trick. And third time, no great interest. So if we want to bring really business on this, we need to be able really to tell stories. So the technology, it's really the enabling performance. So it's really important, but it's an invention. It's not innovation. Innovation is, by definition, an invention that has been adopted by the users. And I will come on some of these issues. So I'm coming from a quite big campus that's in Switzerland, the EPFL, Ecole Polytechnique Fédérale de Lausanne. It's one of the two Swiss Federal Institutes of Technology. But my lab, the EPFL Ecole Lab, is based three miles away, not on the shore, but <laughs> back in the Art and Design School. And our goal is really to use design to explore the potential of emerging technology, and we're working in the RAF field now for a couple of years. So why I think there is a real need for design exploration it's because we need really to establish strong visual language and narrative principle for digital content. Just think about the book. I mean, we took salaries really to, to establish a way to tell stories in, 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 on paper. We took decades for the cinema. When you go on, in theaters, when, how the people are coming in, how they're going out, there's a lot of rules that really creates a way to communicate with the people. And as uh, Mr. Azuma told us this morning, I mean, told us, yes, the um, Buster Keaton of, of, uh, of augmented reality doesn't exist right now. So we still have to invent these rules and know how we can really tell good stories with augmented reality. There's also another issue, how you recreate a credible relation between the objects or the environments and the digital animation. That's still something that we need to understand better. Third thing, the setup and the scenario views. There's still a wide range to explore in this. So we'll show you some of the work that we do and the research that we're carrying out in, in my lab. Um, so I'm speaking, but there's a lot of people working with us, designers, engineers, the computer vision laboratory who released the famous, um, um, uh, famous software a couple of years ago, Markerless, uh, called Ferns, and some industrial designers. I'll just show you one example of, of the project. And you can see this project. I mean, in fact, even the new version, uh, which is even working with a dollar bill uh, in the room 201, and it's called Cashback. We were in Milano, and we had to make something for the big design firm and a new installation with augmented reality. And we thought, yeah, we need to do something where we don't take an object that is really in the exhibition, but where people are bringing their own object. And guess what you have in your pockets? It's banknotes in Milan or credit card. And so we wanted to make a joke with the, with the euros because you know that the design of euros is a bit silly because they invented fake old monuments uh, because I mean, they didn't have enough uh, real old monuments. Uh, I mean, not enough banknotes compared to the number of countries. So uh, you, can, you can see there's no gender issue. It's randomly man or me, uh, female. <laughs> and um, you see England uh, doesn't like Europe. Uh, <laughs> but by creating this kind of thing, we can really see, and the more, and the, the more you put on the machine, the more you see, uh, for sure. Um, but beside this, I mean, we use this kind of installation to understand better how we can tell stories. And um, stop, don't look at this. <laughs> But it's really, I mean, this kind of situation, they are funny, it's nice, and it's cool. Uh, but we really use them to understand some really basic narrative principles. And we'll come on some of these principles here. And um, one of the key uh, topic is really a bit the continuum, and the, the link between physical and virtual world. First, how you create the continuum in the perception of materiality. One of the first projects called uh, Monde des Montagnes uh, that we did, it was uh, Camille Scherer, it's a well-known work that has been uh, seen in, in Seagraph. She really took a book, and by augmenting the book, she took paper cuts. 
And so by taking the language of the paper and also it was related to the cultural environment where it was done, I mean, there was a fully continuum in this, um, on, on this project. The second thing is really the direct link that you still keep with the object. In the Louvre, they did some experience with a 3DS and Nintendo, and it's very interesting because you can play with a lot of information. But when you look at the people using this, they have a headset, they have a screen, and they, they are like in a bubble. So when you go to Paris, you go to the Louvre, you spend half an hour, oh, one and a half hour to get your ticket, you're facing the Joconde, why is it? You have all this distance, you have these layers between you and the real object. That's a concern, and especially for a museum. It's a big concern. Then the credibility between the objects and the animation. And I come back to this installation. So when people, for instance, put the, the banknote on it, you see you have some little dots. What we do in the first seconds, we begin to animate the dots. It means for the people, they don't often look precise like this. It means for the people that something can move in their banknote. It's kind of an intuitive feeling. And then we bring the chip and the thing. So there's a really lot of sequence that help us really to understand how you can on the stage, how you bring other image. And again, it's like in the cinema. You have also some rules, then you can break the rules. But when you understand how to tell the story, you begin to be much more efficient. Then the re interaction. Um, one thing is going beyond what I call the remote control syndrome. One picture, one tag, one animation. Uh, for instance, we, uh, with this cushion, when you press the cushion, uh, it changed the augmentation of the cushion. We also tested some flexible um, uh, augmentation. But, I mean, we had layers like Cadavrexki, and we can combine randomly these layers, meaning that we have more than 2,000 different possibilities with one single object. And we had several trials like this to understand some of the process to make it really different in terms of interaction. Interaction, user-centric. We want people to be engaged. I heard this a lot of time this, this morning, but how you do this? How you understand what is user-centric? And um, often people come to us and say, oh, yes, uh, and we had the travel, travel agency. Uh, they, they came to us and said, oh, we want to bring our clients in, front of, in, in the middle of, of uh, two palm trees, fake palm trees, and in a big screen. And come on, that's, that's, that will have no meaning. It not, would not let the people dream. It's just a little trick. And when you begin to understand better what is immersive or not, you can react much more uh, interestingly. And for instance, uh, you will see the, here in the room 201, a tattoo. When you put the tattoo and the augmentation is coming from your flesh, it's very immersive. You can also try to bring the imagination of people with, the, with this installation called Last Year. This, all the objects belong to a family. We don't know what happened to this family. And if you go with the iPad, this object will reveal some little thing uh, of the, the story. And you have to imagine yourself the story. This really bring your imagination in the, in the interaction. This has also strong power. Also the space around. We, we spoke about context, but the physical context is also important. Often we want to do everything with mobile. Yes, there's a lot of business, great. But also think about, for instance, in boutique or in museum where you have good control environments. You can have very strong experience, good quality, you can control the light. And that's something important. We have also a company creating very luxury uh, high-end bags. They wanted to an experience where the customer could try this at home. But just imagine when the client is testing this in the morning with a bad camera and the bad light and the, probably not in the best shape. The, uh, the, the bag, probably the dream will be totally broken. Uh, so we need to understand uh, the space and the context. Uh, and here, that was one of the installations that is also here, but that we, uh, we did in a, in a, in a custom. Multiple senses, something interesting, but very complex. And because we, our perception is not the same in different area. Here it's the, the famous drum where we're playing with sound. So we have an exhibition, Give Me More, which is just here. Yes, I will go two minutes over, but keep. <laughs> um, uh, Give Me More is funny things, funny stuff you can try, room 201. But it's also for us a good way to understand how people react, to understand this principle. And behind this very simple ideas, there's in fact a lot of work. So we go all, all around the world. We, we went to the Berlin Zion Festival, and it's each time changing. We were last year at iBeam. We had a full iBeam space. And what, that was really uh, uh, interesting. And uh, again, each installation try to understand some, some new things uh, with this. So I'll keep and same time. For me, last but not least, 
innovation involves appropriation, is what I said uh, before. So think about what we call supernormal approach, meaning uh, supernormal is a thing that has been defined by um, uh, Jasper Morrison and Nato Fukuzawa, two very famous designers. It's the essence of normality. How we can bring disruptive things like AR in a way that for people it's, yes, totally new, but in another way it resonates in their cultural and social context. It's something normal, super normal in a, in, in a way. And that's something that's important. Don't forget that BBC for the television dropped and stopped with the 3D because people don't use it at home for television. So we need to have something that really corresponds to the, the daily habit. Perception is also more than storytelling. When you usually we come with uh, storytelling because it's a great thing, but don't forget that your perception is done by layers, and the first layer is is created in the first weeks of your life. It's what we call the world of sensation, sound, light. Everything is in the same kind of climate of sensation, and so that's the strongest uh, first layer. And, and you keep the, all this layer. Then later come the social interaction. Then the the words and then the storytelling, but you keep all these layers. So, so if you have a good storytelling, but you don't address this world of sensation, people will not, they will have a gut feeling that doesn't match with the storytelling and you will lose um, the game. And finally, don't forget the history. I mean, if you look at the history of design and the relation between technology, society and design, you see that in the digital world, we we face some issue that we face with the objects uh, many uh, years before. It's quite interesting to see the parallel and bring back the, this history. So we have here, as I said, uh, the show. It's a small version. We had just um, we had just a couple of hours to set it here, so it's not the big scenography that we had in at IBM. Uh, but at least we we had something here. You can bring a bill of twenty bucks. You can leave it if you want, but <laughs> you can also keep it with you. And secondly, uh, we just released a book uh, designed for innovative technology. So that's the French cover, but you have also the English cover, where we take. Ah, it's at the end also for me. <laughs> Sorry. Um, so um, from disruption to acceptance, and um, we uh, have all this issue in, the, in this book. Thank you. We have time for one, one question. So it's um, my People actually go to movies uh, to watch like two hours of experience. I mean, you know, instant gratification. Are you suggesting that uh, storytelling and everything in AR is progressing in the same way as a cheap substitute for movies and cheap substitute for instant gratification industry? Or is that a possibility? Um, I'll, I will not say that we need to go to two hours of really long time experience. HDMI. I think the, the question is, is really, you, you can do a story in, in, uh, in uh, one minute. It's like you, you do, I, I used to work for the national um, TV channel and also giving the news. Sometimes we have very short pieces that uh, also bring strong stories. So, so for me, the, the question is not the length of the experience, uh, but really the quality of the stories. And also when you get a good story, people keep it, uh, keep it in mind. And it's about the meaning uh, at the end.